the three Virasakamanis stayed that night in one of the palaces of the old Pallava emperors at Mamalapuram. After dinner, the Malay Amon king heard that the story of Aravan was happening near the five chariots and went to listen to it. Aditha Karikalan and Parthapendra went to the upper floor of the palace. Aditha Karikalan was watching the night view of Mamalapuram from the top floor for a while. Here and there a few lamps glowed dimly. The streets were mostly quiet. After completing Arthajama Puja in the temples, they were reaching the outer doors. The ocean's chant of O was heard in a sad tone. Next to the five chariots, the archer Vidwan and his team were telling the story of Aravan, and the crowd of people listening to the story around them were seen as black silhouettes in the light of the lamps. In this advanced age the old man has gone to listen to the story, see. Men of old are men after all. Who has their strength of body and mind these days? Said Aditha Karigalan. O King! Have you also started talking about the glory of the olden days? What things have we not achieved in our time that the men of the olden days have achieved? Have you not even heard in stories and epics about those who performed heroic deeds on the battlefield in their youth? Said Parthapendra. Pardapa. You are true-hearted. I know well that you keep one thing in your mind and never speak one thing with your mouth. Otherwise I would suspect you were not my friend, but an enemy. You flatter me so far. Nothing can send a man to the abyss like flattery. Said Aditha Karigalan. Sir. It would be flattery to invent a false exaltation about someone with selfish motives. Madhurandha is a slave of the Palyavatare in Tanjavur, and if I go to him and praise him, you are a valiant warrior, it is flattery. If you find that I have ever done such a thing, kill me immediately with the sword in their hand. What I said about them not even one word too much. What warrior of old has achieved so many great things at such a young age? Perhaps one can call Rajadithya, who defeated his great master, the elephant, their equal, he cannot be said to be greater than themselves. There's bow singing going on, look there. Are they ordinary people who carved such boulders and shaped them into wonderful chariots? I feel sick to think what a magnificent spectacle this Mamalapuram must have presented 350 years ago. Don't you feel that way? Don't your shoulders heave when you think of your ancestors? O oh King! Did you say that you were flattering yourself a little while ago? You have forgotten that sometimes I am also taking up their accusations. They are also possessed by the madness of wasting their lives on sculpture painting art. It is because of this madness that all the success of my forefathers was in vain. I went to Vatabi and planted Jayast Hambam Mamala came back. Then what did he do? He was sitting carving stones and sweeping rocks. What was the result? After some time the Salukars flourished again. They came again with a large force to take revenge. They destroyed Kanchi and Vrayur. They went as far as Madurai. If only Nejimara Pandian had not stopped and defeated the Salyakar army at Nelvli, the entire country would have been under Salyakar rule till today. But Mahendra Palavar and Mamalar created this sculpture, which will show their pride to the world for a thousand years. What have you and I done in return for what they did? We have killed tens of thousands of men on the battlefield, we have caused a flood of blood to flow. What else have we done to establish our name in the world? Hearing this, Parthapendra was stunned for a while, wondering if it was Adita Karikalan who was talking like this. Then, with a sigh, he said, O oh King! If they themselves talk like this about war and valor, what can I say? Their minds are not in the right state today. That is why you talk like this. Sir! Can't you tell me what is the pain in their hearts? Can't you open up your heart a little? He asked eagerly. Pardipa. If I split open my chest, what would be inside who do you think would be? That's what I want to know, Swami. There will be no mother and father who gave birth to me. There will be no dear sister and brother of my life. You and Van Diathavan, my living friends, will not be there. A woman in the form of deceit will be there. Ilay Yerani of Pavur, born of sin, will be there. Nandini, the fierce and deadly, 
will be the song that lulls me to sleep in my chest till today. I never opened my mouth and told anyone. I told you today. Aditha Karikalan threw Thanal's jewel at the words. O oh king! I guessed it in a way. I knew by the blackness of their faces and eyes reddened with unspeakable agony whenever the young queen of Palyavar spoke. But how did this unworthy passion take hold in their hearts? Did they come from the tradition of treating all foreign women as mothers? Palyavetarayar was a long-standing relative of their clan, Prayam was mature. Even though they are our enemies today, they were not like that before? How much respect and honor did their fathers and grandfathers have for them? Would such a person consider a woman married as Agni's witness, no matter how bad she is, even in their hearts? No, Pardhiba, no. Do you think I don't know that? This heartache is due to knowing. She had no place in my heart after she married Palyavetrayar. Long before that, the poison of her lust had entered my soul. No matter how hard I tried to get rid of it, I made it seem as if all the blame was on her. I speak. God knows whose fault it is. If we go to see, all the blame must fall on the head of God who made us. Or blame it on the destiny that made us meet and then separated us. My lord. Did you meet Nandini before she became queen of Pavur? Where, when, and how did you meet her? That's a big story. Do you want to hear it today? I must ask. If I don't know that, I won't have peace of mind. Are you telling me to go to Sri Lanka tomorrow? I can't go there and do my duty properly. Only if I know what the situation is and console them, then my soul will be at peace somehow. Friend. Are you going to comfort me? There is no comfort for me in this birth. I doubt if there will be in the next birth. I am telling you for your peace of mind. You don't have to go to Sri Lanka thinking that I am hiding something without telling you. Saying this, Aditha Karikalan paused for a while. Then he let out a long sigh and began to speak.